Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick video on the uh, Rally Ray prepped BMW G310 GS. Uh, it's a bike that they uh, saw as the next project after their 500X, and effectively what they did was take the base BMW and equip it with uh, tubeless spoke rims, uh, longer travel, fully adjustable suspension, and a full range of adventure accessories such as the crash bars and the top yoke. Uh, they worked with Scorpion to design an end cam uh, and effectively just took the, the basic 310GS and improved it and made it the bike it perhaps should always have been from the get-go. I rode it when Rally Raid had first uh, developed the bike and did make a, a video then but it was uh, it was very wet, claggy conditions in Northampton on the lane so I didn't get a lot out of it, a lot of footage. Here though, uh, this is footage from when I took the bike again over to Sweet Lamb Adventure Academy in Mid Wales. I was I was running an off-road, uh, a beginner's off-road uh, weekend and uh, I, I was uh, short of a bike so John at Rally Raid lent me the, the 310GS uh, demo bike with the full stage 2 equipment to it which, is, uh, which involves attractive rear suspension, the new fork internals. Uh, spoke rims, tubeless rims, which remain 19 at the front and 17 at the rear. And then again, the, the top yokes, the rental bars, the bar busters, the new power bronze screen, the scorpion can, uh, the tubed engine guard. So the full uh, range of bits on it, really. Um, and I think in this terrain, it really suited the bike. It, you know, I've not, not always been a big fan of the 310GS. When I first rode it, I thought it was pretty good. Um, you know, not a bad balance of, of being capable on road and off road. And then the Himalayan came out, and I know people will laugh, but I, I thought the Himalayan out GS'd the GS in every way. It seemed a better travel bike, it seemed uh, more comfortable on the road, it, it had a bigger tank, it had better carrying capacity. It had, it, it, the Himalayan had everything I needed in a, a small capacity travel bike, whereas I felt that the 310GS just lacked. It lacked a bit of development. It felt like BMW had just uh, rolled out a, a lazy effort, really. You know, they were aiming it at the Asian market predominantly or the uh, South American market, the emerging markets. And uh, they priced it in India, they priced it twice the price of a Himalayan. And it's just definitely not twice the bike that the Himalayan is. Uh, and then the UK, they came in at a pretty low price point, but I don't think in the UK they offered enough to really get people interested in it, such as the spoke rims or the longer travel suspension. It didn't feel like a proper GS, uh, which is what the Rally Raid has effectively done to it. So, yeah, I came into testing the bike at Sweet Lamb. Um, yeah, a bit indifferent to it, but uh, over the weekend and taking the bike out and riding it with the guys who run the KTM off-road school there, uh, it really was a, a brilliant machine in this environment. Um, what I like about it most and what Rally Raid do best is, is transform the suspension. And it's amazing what different suspension will do to a bike. You know, you've got the best part of a £1,000 of suspension on a £5,000 bike and it you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of money, but it does transform the way the bike tracks, rides, and handles. Over, over. I mean, I know this isn't overly rutted. It's not overly rough. It's kind of wide open fire track and uh, forestry roads. But it, the way the bike handles and the confidence it gives you is, is the biggest transformation. And I think if that's all you spent your money on, in changing your three ten GS, I think you'd notice a huge difference. Obviously, the wheels. They don't really make a difference to the way it rides, um, and the other things. You know, the the I guess the engine guard's useful if you're doing a lot of rock hopping or riding in rutted, uh, stony or uh, tree roots and things like that. But it's the suspension that really makes the biggest difference to the way the bike rides. And you know, these were guys on seven nineties. They were all instructors. They were all good riders. They all add just under 100 brake horsepower against the BMW's 34, and obviously they were better riders than me. But the 310 did well, uh, and what I liked was the engine. You could really wind the engine out. It's an, it's an engine that likes to perform in the higher rev range, very different to the Himalayan where it's all about the mid-range torque and not a, not a lot of top end on that bike. But on the 310GS, with that suspension, you could really get the most out of that engine. Um, the composure under braking is good. Um, 
traction is is, is uh, obviously you're not going to break traction easy with 34 brake horsepower but it did it it was also very manageable in the in the wet rutted deeper sections it, it became a very good in the technical sections i think so yeah all in all I, I was impressed with the way it performed um i did then ride the bike on the road after that weekend at sweet lamb and again that lack of mid-range and the way that the bike lacks any uh uh, low down chug you know it's a bike that you quite easily stall it, it takes a bit of getting used to to not stall the bike and i think those fat features of it uh, again rub me up the wrong way when it comes to an ownership proposition would i buy one would i swap the himalaya for one i still don't think i i, I would just because i like the overall ability of the himalaya the usability of it and the fact that for four thousand pound you can roll out the factory out the showroom and take it around the world you know, um, spending three thousand pound of rally raid equipment on a five thousand pound bike, you've got to have the money there. You've got to have the the means really to to, to go down that avenue. But uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, I think it's uh, it's interesting uh, making this video now that the KTM three ninety has come out. You know, a lot of people put a lot of hope on that bike as being KTM's magnificent small engine adventure bike. But again, just like the BMW, it's come out at a slightly diluted manner, you know, with the cast wheels, lack of uh, suspension travel. It's a soft road. It's again designed for the emerging markets. It's designed to get Kate, uh, to make KTM riders out of, uh, in Southeast Asia and places like that. It's, 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 um, it's not for us Brits. It's not for us, for the Americans. It's not for the to the established adventure markets. It's for the emerging adventure markets. So again, the KTM is going to need spoke wheels. It's probably going to need some longer travel suspension to make it the bike it always should have been. And I think that's the biggest shame from the two established brands, KTM and BMW. That you know the the the, the economic model is just not there for them to give us a proper adventure bike. Would bmw make a proper 310 adventure bike that retail for eight thousand pounds no because they know that they wouldn't sell it and nor would ktm do the same with the 390 because nobody would buy it at that sort of price but at that sort of pro but it's that sort of price that means you're going to get the good equipment to make it a good off-road bike so i think ultimately you, you can't have everything you can't have a good value bike that also performed well on on, on the dirt it just can't happen it takes a company like rally raid to take the basic bike and improve it with quality suspension uh, and, and a bit more a bit more of a focused thought on what they want to achieve with it so uh, so it was an interesting ride i also got a ride on the 790 adventure r's which are i mean they, they were uh, flying machines really um hugely capable in this environment far better than I am as a rider and I, I think um, I'm not sure I would use one as a travel bike I think there's still a little little bit uh, under tested and I, I, I'm skeptical as to the amount of electronic involvement on it or features or uh, sensors and things like that I don't think they would be my choice of a reliable long distance travel bike I think that's where the Yamaha Tenere 700 probably wouldn't be my choice maybe it wouldn't be as good a bike for flying around sweet lamb on a weekend but if you're going to take that bike on a long distance haul then it would probably be the the tenere 700 uh, as impressive as, as the 790 adventures are um they're too much bike for the average traveler is that is, is the conclusion i came to with all the options for traction control and various abs and things um so that was it, a good weekend at Sweet Lamb. Very impressed by the 310 GS by Rally Raid in these conditions. I think if you already own a 310 GS and want to improve it, get to the Rally Raid website and, and, and first things first, look at the suspension because that is the biggest change to, to the bike. The undersprung, undersprung uh, nature of the standard bike really uh, is transformed by the, the, by the, the tractive um suspension upgrade and then look at the other things you know the new uh, triple clamp and risers engine guard you could buy it piecemeal uh, bit by bit probably leave the wheels till last i know aesthetically the wheels make the biggest difference to how it looks but 
in terms of how the bike rides, it's the suspension and the riding position that uh, you, you really want to focus on. And then it makes the bike the bike it always should have been by BMW. And uh, I think it's as much as I know people like their 310 GSs, I still can't help but feel that BMW should have done more with that bike. And I, I think they, in hindsight, they probably wish they'd done more with it as well. So uh, there we go. Cheers.